Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Zombie Meatloaf. That's right, do not let the gruesome appearance fool you. Beneath that horrifying complexion, we have what turned out to be a really, really nice meatloaf. So even if you're not trying to scare and or gross out your guests at your Halloween party, you'll still hopefully find this video worthwhile. Although I should mention quickly that if you make this without the zombie face, I will haunt your dreams. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with our meatloaf mix. And to begin that, we will melt a scary amount of butter over medium high heat in a skillet, to which we will add a whole bunch of diced celery and onions, as well as some very finely chopped mushrooms, along with a traditional giant pinch of salt. And then what we'll do is stir all that together, and we're gonna to wanna to cook this until our onions soften and the mixture starts to turn a little bit golden, which is not gonna happen right away, because that salt's gonna draw out a lot of water from the mushrooms, and at first your mixture is going to be very wet, but just give it a few minutes and you'll see that water will evaporate. And eventually the mixture will dry out and saute up nicely. And we'll cook that until it looks a little something like this. And once it reaches this stage, what we'll do is turn off the heat and add the following ingredients. We will toss in some finely minced garlic, as well as a healthy dose of freshly ground black pepper. I'm also going to toss in a nice pinch of dry thyme. And then we'll finish up with a little bit of ground satin. Sorry, I mean ground cayenne. And what we'll do with our heat off is go ahead and stir that in, since there is going to be enough residual heat to take the raw edge off that garlic. And that's it. Once all that's incorporated, we'll simply let that cool down to room temperature before adding it to our meat. Speaking of which, cue the meat. In this bowl, I have three pounds of ground beef. And in case you're keeping score at home, that is the 85% lean variety. And what we'll need to do is season that up with some kosher salt, which always looks like too much, but it's not. It's the perfect amount. We will also add a splash of milk or buttermilk. I'm using buttermilk because of the pie. Let's also toss in one beaten egg, as well as a nice splash of Worcestershire sauce, which by the way, I'm getting pretty good at pronouncing. But anyway, let's go ahead and finish this up with some ketchup, as well as a generous sprinkling of dry breadcrumb. And that is gonna be it for our monstrous meatloaf mix. All we need to do now is add our now cooled vegetable mixture. And once we have everything together, we're going to want to combine this thoroughly using probably our hands. Which really does the best job for something like this. And yes, for a zombie meatloaf, it does help if your hands and arms look like a werewolf. But even smooth, hairless ones will work. And we'll go ahead and mix that until it's thoroughly combined, but no further. Okay, once we think it's mixed, we'll stop. At which point we will cover that in plastic and pop it in the fridge until we're ready to use it. All right, not only is this stuff gonna be easier to shape if it's cold, but we also need a little bit of time to form our eyes and teeth, which we're gonna do using an onion. And what we'll do once that's peeled is simply make two slices on the side like this, which should give us a couple somewhat eye-shaped pieces. And then since it's not really an eye unless it has a pupil, I'm gonna go ahead and push in a couple cloves into the center. And that's it. So nothing too tricky. And then what we'll do for the teeth is slice off another section about an inch wide and cut those into a few tooth-like sections as shown. And then once those are done, we can move on to shape our zombie head, which I'm going to do on a sheet pan on which I place down a piece of parchment paper. And if you'll notice, I sprinkled a little bit of water under that sheet so it doesn't slide around. And what we'll do using some damp hands is transfer our meat onto that sheet pan and then to the best of our abilities, form some kind of skull-like shape. And while I'm no anatomy expert, I do know we need some kind of nasal cavity, as well as some freakishly large eye sockets, and of course some kind of mouth. And again, you'll want to keep your hands damp so the meat doesn't stick to your fingers. So we'll go ahead and orifice the meat. And let me spin mine around so you can see how I did. So that's looking pretty good, and by good I mean bad. And we are now ready to proceed to the most fun step, the baconine. And what we're attempting to do here is cover the surface with bacon, so they sort of look like the muscles on a face if the skin's been peeled off. And the only real tip I can give you here is try to get the ends of the bacon to end up either in an orifice or underneath the skull. And if you're wondering, did I Google a picture of the muscular structure of a face to help me with this? Yes, yes I did. And did that help? No, not really, but it didn't hurt. But anyway, we'll go ahead and cover our skull in bacon as shown in some sort of semi-symmetrical way. 
And then what we'll do once our surface has been covered and looking something like this is go ahead and press in our eyeballs. And we'll want to make sure we're pressing those in nice and deep. Okay, the last thing you're going to want with a zombie meatloaf is bulging eyeballs. So we will make sure those are well pushed in. And then of course we'll also go ahead and place in our teeth. And then once we decide we're happy with our dental work, we will move to the final phase of this phase. And that'll be to place down a few more strategically placed strips of bacon that sort of overlap the edges of the eyes. And I really think it's these last few pieces that gives our zombie meatloaf that truly realistic look. Or I'm overthinking this. But anyway, I draped over a few more strips here and there. And obviously when you make yours, the exact placement will be up to you. I mean, you are after all the undead of all that stuff I just said. So you go ahead and place those wherever you think they look good. And don't be afraid to use some torn or strangely shaped pieces, since I think that's going to add to the whole effect. And then at some point, no matter how fun this is, we're going to have to stop and do one last step before we can put this in the oven. And that's to take some kind of spatula and go around making sure all the bacon is well tucked underneath. And then once that's been accomplished, we are finally ready to bake this, which we'll do in the center of a 325 degree oven for about an hour or until we reach an internal temp of 155. And about 10 or 15 minutes in, I got scared my onion eyes were going to brown. So I went ahead and covered those in foil. And continued baking at 325 for, like I said, about an hour or so. Until it looked like this. And yes, of course, we could have done this in a very hot oven and tried to get crispy bacon. But I was afraid it was all going to contract and not look as good. Plus, I think a meatloaf is much better and much moister, cooked at a lower heat. And I'm going to talk more about that on the blog. But I did want to acknowledge I sacrificed crispy bacon for a more realistic look. So I went ahead and uncovered the eyes, and then spooned out some of the juices from our nasal cavity and mouth. Although it may have been scarier to leave that in. And then as far as serving goes, what I did is transfer this to a cutting board. And decide to go around the edge squirting some blood sauce. Which I will give you the recipe to on the blog. It was just barbecue ketchup and hot sauce. So I went ahead and applied some of that to the outside edge as well as into the mouth. And that's it, what I'm calling a zombie meatloaf is done and ready to terrify my guests. Although I have to admit, this is really not that scary in the middle of the day. But imagine this at night with candlelight. I imagine that's gonna be pretty scary. But anyway, that concludes the gimmick stage of the video. And we can move on to was it a good meatloaf? Which it really was. So I sliced off a few pieces of chin and served that with a little bit of blood sauce over the top next to some monster mashed potatoes, which are just like regular mashed potatoes, only with a different name. And even my buttered asparagus was scary because it was grown by pagans. I'm sorry, not pagans, vegans, but still pretty scary. So I grabbed a fork and went in for a taste. And this really did turn out to be a moist and flavorful meatloaf. Okay, all those veggies, especially the mushrooms, really helped to add a lot of moisture. And it's always been my experience that things roasted with like a pound of bacon wrapped around them usually come out tasting pretty good. And this certainly did. So even though you might not want to make this into a horrifying zombie face, I still think you're really going to enjoy this recipe. But having said that, I really do hope you take the extra few minutes to make this look frightening and grotesque. But either way, I really do hope you give it a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.